Hi everybody and welcome to week eight of our Mighty Small Summer. And this week we are reading James and discussing what it means to put our faith into action and reflecting on if faith without works is dead. Um, you can't really see it behind me, like there was no good way to get a view. Um, but we are at the lake for a few weeks. Um, I am in Iowa, so if there are some awkward pauses in this, it's just to let a boat go by. It's been a busier than normal Monday morning on the lake. So let us pray. Draw your church together, O oh God, into one great company of disciples together following our teacher Jesus Christ into every walk of life, together serving in Christ's mission to the world and witnessing to your love wherever you will send us. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So I realize that asking Lutherans to read James is a bit like trying to give a cat a bath, but I've given cats baths in the past and I've survived and so I think we can get through reading James together. You know, as Lutherans we tend to run away from James. Luther had problems with the book because it was so heavy in terminology about the law. But I don't really think the book's something that we need to run away from. And in reality, it doesn't contradict anything that we believe. Our faith should compel us to act. Our faith should compel us to do justice, to love mercy and to walk humbly before our God. Our faith should compel us to love one another as Christ loves us, to love our neighbor as ourselves, to get into good trouble. Our faith should compel us to care for the widow, the orphan, and the alien in our land. Faith should have us do something for the good of everyone. Yes, we are justified by faith through grace apart from works, but that's because we can't save ourselves. Only God can do that, and he's done that through Jesus. <coughs> I think I ate a bug. <clears throat> Baptism isn't a free pass to ignore issues of social justice. Rather, it's an invitation to enter into the hard work of creating heaven on earth. James sees the hypocrisy of those in the church, those who have ears but don't hear, and he calls them out on them. And perhaps we tend to ignore James because we see ourselves in those who he's calling out. We go to church, we recite the creed, we confess our sins, we take communion, we sing a few songs, maybe we throw some money in a plate, we go home. And then what do we do? Do we put our faith to work or do we stay willfully ignorant of injustice? And that's what James is calling attention to, time and time and time again. And it's easy to ignore problems in our society, maybe, because I'd argue that it takes a lot more effort to put your head into the sand and ignore everything 
than it does to actively do something. And keep in mind that something that you can do can be prayer. But following Christ isn't supposed to be easy. Like there's no easy way out of this. It's always been about doing justice, loving mercy, walking humbly, doing the right thing, even if you'll lose friends. And I think that's a big concern lately is if we call someone out on their less than Christ-like behavior, that we might sever this connection with a friend or a family member. And we're so worried about that, that we put our own selfishness, our own need to be loved and needed above what really needs to be said and what needs to be done. And so as you read James this week, I'd encourage you to take the book seriously and don't just brush it off because it's an epistle of straw and we don't need it in the Bible. Take it seriously. And there is grace in there. It's not all law. And we need law. We can't just have grace. Um, you have to have this balance. And so as you read, think about how you can balance putting your faith into action, your faith into works, how you can balance that with grace. Because that's really what the law is. It's putting our faith into action. I think that you will get through reading James. I think that it will give you a lot to think about and to ponder. And you might be really mad at me by the time you get done watching this video. And that's okay. Um, I can take it, I think. We are called to be the light of the world in a city on the hill and if we're going to be the light for the world when there is so much darkness, we've really got to be bright. So ponder how we can put what we confess and what we believe into actions to make our world a better, brighter place. Mm -hmm. Amen.